So I have another React challenge for you all. This is probably more of a beginner React challenge, but the idea is can you build out a stoplight component that kind of triggers between different states with intervals? Um, so like the red state of the stoplight would be for like five seconds and then yellow might be for two and then green might be for 10 or 20. That is what we're gonna try to build. And I think this is good practice if you're a beginner trying to understand more about hooks. All right, before we just jump into coding, let's think about what state would be needed for this stoplight, okay? There is stop, slow down, and go. So we can kind of encode that as TypeScript state. I'll just say like stoplight state. And then we're gonna go ahead and make this uh, equal to stop, slow, and go. Okay, so now we have a type that we can kind of use to keep track of the different state of our stoplight. So the second thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna use that state somewhere, right? So I'm gonna say const, State, that state is equal to use state. This, go ahead and import that use state hook. And then I'm gonna type this use state hook with our stoplight state to say that, hey, this stoplight has to be one of these three things, stop, slow, or go. I'm gonna go ahead and default it to being stopped. So it's gonna be red. Okay, so let's focus on just getting three circles displayed onto the screen and have them light up based on this state here. Okay. We're not going to worry about like intervals yet. We're just going to try to get something displayed. So let's start doing the simplest thing possible. I'm going to make a div here. And this div is going to be styled a little bit. I'll just say class name is going to be, um, I'll say stop. And as we're styling this, let's go to the app CSS here and I'll say dot stop. And this is going to be a width of 100 pixels. I'm just going to give it some width and some height. I'm gonna give it some border radius of 50%, and then I'm gonna give it a background of red. Okay, so that should make a red circle, hopefully, um, if I did this correctly. And let's go ahead and view our app. There we go, we got a red circle. So let's do the same thing with slow and go. Okay, and notice I'm putting them in a particular order. I want the red to be at the top, slow to be in the middle, and go to be at the bottom. So let's go ahead and style these. Okay, I'm just going to do a little bit of copy and pasting here. This will be yellow, and this one will be green. Okay, let's make sure those show up. We got our stoplight showing up over here. So if you're good at CSS, you might be like, well, these are kind of duplicated amongst all these different classes, right? So if you kind of have an eye for that, um, it would be good to potentially abstract that away and just call it light. Okay, and we're going to cut this out and paste it here, and I'm going to delete all those. And now I can actually go here and add light so that these divs have two classes now. They have a class called light that defines like the rounding and the width and the height. And then we also have the colors. So now we have to basically figure out a way to make this stuff active or not. And let me go ahead and center this on the screen. So like if I make this a div here and say like stop light, go ahead and say class name. And then we'll go back to our CSS here, say stop light. All right, so now that, so inside the stop light class, what we wanna do is I like to do a display of flex, um, which allows you to kind of center things a lot easier. So I'll say display flex, I'll say flex direction is column. And then we're gonna say items, um, we'll say align items center. Okay, so that should push those to the center here. And then also you can add a little bit of gap between these stop lights if you want. So I can just say gap, um, say 10 pixels. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to make the ones that are not on be grayed out. So what we could potentially do is we could add an enabled or an on to one of these stoplights, and we can figure out how to style that over here. So I'll say on. So I'm going to do something called a, uh, a pseudo selector, and I'm going to do dot light, and I'll say not on. And any light that's not on, we'll say background is going to be gray. All right, there we go. So now we have the ability to kind of go through here. I can go ahead and remove the on from here and just make sure this works. There we go. All right, so now we're going to get into the actual like React part of things. Okay, the first thing is we need to use this state to dynamically change which one is on. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to convert this to interpolated classes. And we're instead going to dynamically add the class of on, if and only if, 
the state is equal to the current thing, right? So what do I mean by that? Well, we can just append here. I can say state is equal to stop. Then we're going to append on. Otherwise, we will append nothing. Okay. Now this, this looks a little hacky. I'll clean this up in a bit. But doing an approach like this should allow us to dynamically add um, the on based on what state is set. Okay, so for this one, if the stop light state is stop, then we're going to add the on. So now we're going to test this out. We're going to go over here and we're going to change this from stop to slow and then from slow to go. Okay, that seems pretty good. So this works, right? We know this works. Now I want to make this a little bit cleaner because this is really ugly. So I'm going to go ahead and say function get stop light class. And then I'm going to say um, light is a type of stop light state. And then we're going to go ahead and just return this whole thing here like this. So instead of doing this three times, we're just going to go ahead and call this like this. And I will just go ahead and say stop here. This is the interface we're trying to code for, right? We want to call a function that is passed in stop. And then we want to interpolate this. So I'm actually changing this to an interpolation here. And then I'm going to say light. And then we're only going to add the on if the thing that we passed in here matches the current state that we have here. Okay, let's just refactor these other ones a little, little bit and uh, make sure this works fine. So this should be slow. This should be go. Okay. Make sure this still works. Looking good. Okay, so now we want to actually add the intervals. How do we make this thing change from red to yellow to green based on some intervals, okay? So what I'm going to try doing first is I'm going to bring in a use effect. And I'm going to go ahead and listen for the state here. Okay, so whenever the state changes, we're going to set up some different intervals um, or timeouts, I guess. And we're going to change the state based on certain timeouts. So I'm going to go ahead and say if state is equal to stop, we want to do something. Else if state is equal to slow, we could do something. Else we know that we're in go, right? So if we are in the state of stop, we're going to say set timeout. We're going to call a function here called set state, and we're going to go from stop to slow, and we're going to go three three seconds. Okay, so in three seconds, that's how long we're going to stay on the red. And I don't like magic numbers, so I'm going to go ahead and say const stop delay is equal to three three uh, three thousand, and go ahead and do that. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing for the other states too. We'll say there's a slow delay of two seconds, and then we'll have a go delay of five seconds. And I now that I think about it, I think I'm kind of doing this backwards. I think we go from go to slow to stop. So if we're on stop, we should actually go straight to go. And then over here, if we're on go, we should go to slow. And if we're on uh, slow, we should go to stop. So let's just kind of uh, watch this real quick and see what happens. So we were at red. Let's we'll say that's for five seconds, and then one, two, one, two, three. Go. All right, so although the stoplight is pretty much working pretty well, I would say that it's not that great of code because there's no abstraction about the stoplight at all. If I wanted to copy and paste this and have three stoplights on the screen, I can't do that easily, right? So using component-based architecture, it's good to have maybe a stoplight component. Okay, so I'm going to copy all the code from the main app. And we're going to go ahead and say export function stoplight. And this is going to contain all the code. So we want to kind of encapsulate uh, all of the, the state related to the stoplight, um, the intervals and effects that are related to that particular stoplight. And what we can do instead is just return this, right? I think this will work just fine. You could potentially set up some initial props if you wanted to allow someone to like change the initial stoplight state or change the intervals of what these things are. But we're going to keep this simple. I'm going to go ahead and delete all this code. Anything that's not needed anymore will hopefully be highlighted by your ESLint. Um, and we're going to go ahead and just put a couple of stoplights here. Okay, let's just go ahead and put like three. 
Go ahead and auto import this. And I need a parent um, div or something. So let's just go ahead and add one. Okay, so now we run into a little issue where I believe the stoplight was given some type of flex, um, but the actual wrapper, so I need to say like class name, I'll say like um, page. I don't know if it really matters. But we want to also add on the page itself, we want to do some display flex. Um, I think just display flex should be good enough. And that should put them side by side. And then we can also say gap of like 20 pixels or something. And then also if you wanted to center them, we could just say justify content center. There we go. So now what this allows us to do is we can like copy and paste as many stoplights as we want. And they will all execute with their own initial state and intervals and stuff like that. So at this point, they should all be synced together. Um, but let's say that you wanted to change the initial state of the stoplight. Okay, so I'm going to try to add some initial state. Um, so we'll just do a structuring here. I'll say initial state. And this is going to be an object, which is going to take in a stoplight state. This. And um, now this will all be red because we have to pass in that initial state for this to be happy. So technically, what we could do is we could make this thing optional. <clears throat> I guess I need to put it there, actually. Um, and then if this thing is not set, what we could do is just default here. We'll just default it to stop. Okay, so now everything is good. They all default to stop. Um, now if I wanted to change some of these, if I go here and say initial state, we could say this one's go. This one over here could be slow. I'll go ahead and refresh the page. And now notice that they all start off with their own state, their own intervals under the hood. I guess their own timeouts under the hood. Um, and they change as needed. Some final remarks. Um, this is kind of like a state machine, so you could potentially bring in something called X state to make this a little bit cleaner. Although I think what we have here is perfectly fine because this isn't that complicated to just use state and an effect. But if you want to use like a reducer, that's also something you can do that kind of works better with state machines. All right, that kind of wraps up this challenge problem. I hope you guys tried it out for yourself and maybe you learned one or new two things by watching this video. If you did, leave a comment below. Let me know that you enjoyed this. And then also, if you have any other example practice problems you want me to try doing, leave a comment or reach out to me. Uh, I like doing these because I do think it helps people kind of understand the problem solving aspects of web development and React. Yeah, well, that's about it. Have a good day and happy coding.